Um, our reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 15. It says, But the Lord's love for your ancestors was so strong that he chose you instead of any other people, and you are still his chosen people. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is Moses telling the children of Israel that the Lord has chosen you. Because his love for your ancestors was so strong. So God ended up choosing the Israelites to become his people because of the ancestors of the Israelites. That uh, we know about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those people created such a great bond with God. They loved God and they did what was pleasing in his sight. In such a way that even though the children of Israel, um, they were not... They did not deserve the kind of love that God gave them. But God still remembered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the promise that he made to them. So it tells us a lot, a lot that as we are here, we are creating uh, a relationship with God. And if we are not doing so, we are going to affect our generation indirectly. So we see Moses from the book of uh, from chapter 8 up to chapter 10, Moses was simply telling the children of Israel that whatever that God did for you, it's not because you deserved it. He mentioned it many times. He said, you are very stubborn people, but God has allowed you to enjoy this fertile land, which is the promised land, because of the ancestors, the way your ancestors, the way he loved Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If we look at verse 6 of chapter 9, Deuteronomy as well, it says that you can be sure that the Lord is not giving you this fertile land because you deserve it. No, you are a stubborn people. Verse 7 now says, Never forget how you made the Lord your God angry in the desert. From the day that you left Egypt until the day you arrived here, you have rebelled against him. So, no matter what these people were doing, no matter how much they disappointed God, I don't know how many times it was mentioned that Moses had to go before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights to pray unto God for forgiveness for the same people. And there's a time that God tells uh, Moses that, you know what, I just want to destroy these people and just forget about them because um, they have grieved me so much such that I'll just make you and your family a great nation and just forget about the rest of the Israelites. But Moses kept on going to ask for forgiveness on their behalf. It tells us the, 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 the greatness of the, the way they sinned against God, how they grieved God every time. But God still considered them to be his chosen ones because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I want us to put ourselves in the position of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that what kind of uh, example are we setting for the generations that are going to come after us? You know, there are things that we face right now that when we sit down, we probably ask ourselves that, um, but God, why, why is this happening? You know, some people ask that question which is uh, it's not a very uh, good question at all because you're questioning God, yet you don't know what happened in the past. So probably what we are facing right now, it's not because of the way that you behave. Probably you pray a lot, you fast, you see God's face, you are very holy and you're walking in the right way, but you see things that are following you and it's so hard for you to understand why. You need to understand that someone uh, in your past or your ancestors did something that grieved God and now all of you you just face the same consequence regardless of how you are living your life at that moment so we go back to ourselves what kind of life are we living right now is it a good life a pleasing life a life in which uh when God looks at us he's, he will be like um even though these people are disappointing me we are now in the future right mm -hmm in case your generation decides to not follow God, God will be still able to say, uh, even though these people are hurting me, but I made a promise to praise. I made a promise to prayer. I made a promise to peace that 
um, I would make them great. I would make their generation great. So the blessing will just flow through. And same applies if you're doing something wrong, that thing is going to affect your next generation. So there are things that we face that we cannot really um, align them to the way that we are living right now, but it's because of what happened in the past. So that's my message today, that let's live a life that is pleasing to God. Let's live a life that makes God to love us such that he will just love, he will be forced to love the generations that come after us. Not because of what they do, but because of what we did. Imagine how Abraham, Isaac and Jacob felt when they were in heaven and they would see how God would just continuously forgive these people, giving them another chance every time because of what they had done. So our behavior, what we do and our character me help in giving somebody another chance to prove that they can actually be serviceable. That's that's my message. Glory to God. What a touching message. We need to go before the Lord and ask Him for grace. Lord, we want to live a place, a life that pleases you. I think the most touching for me is the fact that I think everybody all over the world, people are fighting different kinds of spirits. Some are fighting with the vengeance spirits. Because one of the ancestors made a mistake. One of the ancestors was a stubborn. He or she did what was not supposed to be done. They killed a person or they killed people. And now those spirits are following Others committed suicide. And now it's just normal in certain families to commit suicide. Nice person, hardworking, very polite, beautiful or handsome. You just hear they've committed suicide. And by so doing, they are also creating a precedence for generations to come. Others were lazy. They were not hardworking. And they have put the, all the generations to come. They are a laughing stock. All their, you know, um, all their grand, 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 grandsons and grand, 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 granddaughters. They are slaves because of what they did. But we know that there are people, a few people, who decided to live a holy life, an exemplary life. And then it has also been passed down the generation. So, yes, we might cry and say, hmm, but here's why our ancestors, hmm, why did they do this? But what are you doing yourself? Just like people complain about Adam. You see Adam and Eve, see what they did for us. But are you better? Are you stopping what Adam and Eve did? Or are you are perpetuating the same thing to the next generations? Jesus Christ walked on earth he is called the second Adam. He made a choice. The Bible says he was tempted left, right, and center. He was tempted on every side. But he decided to live a life that was opposite that of the first Adam. So we can be like Jesus. We can live an exemplary life. I think this was a very powerful message. Let's go before the Lord and say, Father, have mercy on me. I do not want generations to come to be crying because of me. I want generations to come, not only your offspring, but even offsprings of other people, nations out there, because now we are in a global village. Let women and men, boys and girls all over the world benefit from you. Let them get inspired to live a peaceful and loving and caring life and developing their societies, developing their countries because they are copying you. Lord, grant us grace. Let's go ahead.